Well, yes. Thank, well, again, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Love the topic. Um, I'm kind of biased, <laughs> but um, <laughs> needless But you know what? Say, That's a bias that I think is a healthy bias. You know, right, that one, right, I right, think right. is... <laughs> <laughs> but with in as much um my journey uh to this point has been uh you know a work in motion I should say a yeah. work in progress um I think I've I, I think it's safe to say I've come full circle mm. I started in the area of nonprofits um as well as working in social service as a uh, a protective social worker, children's protect protective social worker. And as you can imagine, that was very demanding. I came right out of college, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, excited, ready to change the world. And I got, so to speak, thrown into the deep end, for lack of better words, mm. trying to figure out how to navigate um, through the world of social service and uh, philanthropic types of, of work. And um, with that said, I had to quickly identify ways of wellness, well-being, maintaining that. I didn't know what that looked like at 23, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed out of college thinking, oh, the world is ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to apply all the theories and not realizing that behind the scenes there, were, there was a lot more involved. I did come to realize that through the years I ended up working with social service for about 15 years, decided to uh, go into education as an adjunct professor teaching psychology and counseling after graduate school. But nonetheless, it's led me full circle right on back to social service, now running my own organization, organizations and companies. And um, I'm passionate about the work of supporting um, individuals in identifying wellness and incorporating that and making it a lifestyle. And so I'm really looking forward to this, this talk, our discussion about uh, wellness as it pertains to Black professionals, employees, and minorities. So thank mm. you for having me again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So happy you're here. So let's jump right in. Um, as it's Black History Month right now. And as we always like to say here, just because it's this month, it's actually every day, right? It doesn't, you know, like- I saw something that said yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Black History Month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, okay, I like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> and next month and the month after that, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in keeping with that, which is wonderful. That's right, that's right. So I love that, you we're talking about this holistic approach, right, to to health, uh, to um, that's, you know, mentally, physically, all of our well-beings. How, when someone, when you're helping someone, you said you're helping a lot of different individuals and companies, where do we start with, where do you start for this holistic approach, considering all the cultural nuances and there's so many societal expectations? So how do we begin I think the first point is uh, starting with intentionality. So of course, to have intentionality, you have to identify where you're gonna exercise intentionality. Mm. And so those two go hand in hand when you're uh, addressing holistic health. Because holistic in, in, in a nutshell means we're addressing it from every corner. We're tackling it and not tackling it necessarily, but embracing it from every avenue. And so in order to do that, we have to really step back and really look at it from every angle, peripherally, as I like to say, to have a better understanding. And in order to understand it, we have to know what it means, first of all, <laughs> um, and then exercise identifying where we can utilize it. Where can we utilize? Where can we incorporate holistic health in our own lives? And what does that mean as a Black professional, as a Black employee to our career landscape? And so I'm looking forward to really talking about some of the, st the strategies, but I would like to start with intentionality, identifying, mm -hmm. hey, I need to address this 
from a holistic perspective and then being intentional. So an ex example of intentionality or being intentional would be, hey, at seven o'clock every day, I'm going to not accept any more emails. That's what I'm going to turn off. And so you've identified it, right? We've identified this is ho what holistic health looks like in my life. And now we're deciding to be intentional with keeping it at the forefront and, and really exercising our boundaries, a soft mm -hmm. boundary, <laughs> right? Right? Because we know we want to peek at it. We can't, it's like so tempting. Oh, I got to look. I know I said this, but I really want to see what this says, but being intentional. So I... I I think that's a, a safe place to start is being intentional in addressing those nuances and um, identifying what that means in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the intentionality of boundaries is so important. And what really resonates with me is usually I'm the first one to break my boundaries, not other people. Like you just called, I felt seen like I actually set a block on my email till 10. Uh, here I am at eight, you know. <laughs> scene scene <laughs> how yes. do you how do you help yourself keep that intentionality and stay accountable to some of those initial boundaries of getting started i think that you will have to identify what helps you to be more accountable too because accountability looks different for everyone some work better with being accountable to someone else, having a partner, right? Finding that pal mm -hmm. that will hold you accountable. Some of us don't. Some of us need something as simple as writing a note, having a journal that helps us to track our accountability, right? Having it written. And I think that speaks to how we learn best too. If you're a kinesthetic learner, if you're an auditory learner, if you're a, a visual learner, tapping into that as well, identifying mm -hmm. how you connect with intentionality best and then holding yourself accountable. But having somewhere a frame of reference, I think is important, whatever that looks like, whether that means putting that little note on the mirror every day or writing that chart or having the journal or having that partner that you check in with daily, whatever that is, identifying that first and then being committed to carrying that out um, is a form of the accountability and putting those boundaries, inserting those boundaries, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think I love how you were saying, well, we have to step back even first to just recognize and examine what is accountability for me not what someone else thinks it is yeah. getting really clear on that because it's not a one size fits all right and it can change for me too i need to let myself be flexible right yeah for me it's seasonal <laughs> mm, you know yeah from season to season accountability looks different Sometimes I want, you know, I'll have that workout goal and I want an accountability partner to, and then there's other times that I just want to go within and really mm -hmm. sort some things out within and be accountable to myself on yeah. a different, and it, it has a different look, different framework. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we've done that work, now we have a, a little bit of understanding, accountability for me this season, this day, whatever that is. Uh, can you speak to some specific strategies or daily practices that Black professionals can implement to enhance their mental well-being while navigating the complexities of the workplace? Absolutely. I think first and foremost, Black professionals, minority employees have to make sure that whatever they're incorporating aligns with their cultural values as well. Um, I think that that has to be taken into account for minority um, employees, for Black employees, Black professionals, um, that there are other outside stressors that have to be incorporated or addressed, um, systemic um, challenges that have to be addressed. And so there's another layer that goes, there's another component that has to be considered when Black professionals are tackling that. Some of the recommendations I have um, are some general and some a little bit more specific. Um, starting with mindful breathing, 
taking that time to breathe through the day, something as simple as we think we breathe every day. We're like, we're breathing, but <laughs> mindfully breathing, right? Really doing that body scan, identifying where there might be stress in our body and, and really addressing that. Mindful walking. These are all mindful types of, of techniques. Um, for me, um, I incorporate a lot of faith-based um, prayer has helped me to be um, find my calm sometimes mm -hmm. or most times mm -hmm. in stressful situations. Um, so identifying what a calm looks like for you, where you land best, right? And then it, it really being intentional, there goes that word again, and exercising it, mindful breathing, mindful walking, gratitude journals, um, eating, believe it or not. Mm, mm -hmm. Mindful eating, right? We go to lunch, oftentimes we're at work, but how often do we go to work and actually savor when we go to lunch, actually savor what we're eating? Eating mm -hmm. something healthy that makes our body feel good, that's nourishing our body, but actually taking the time to get those those chews in, right? <laughs> Aren't we supposed to get... <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. How often do we really take time to chew our food and think and process? Mm -hmm. So something as simple as that, those simple types of techniques can make a world of difference in our day, can make a world of difference how we approach ourselves as well as those around us, how we approach work, how we approach our task. Um, so I would strong, I'm a big proponent I'm a huge proponent of identifying what works for you. Again, not a one size fits all, but finding it, identifying it and, and being habitual and being habitual, mm -hmm. with it, being consistent with it, um, because anything can work one time. But if we're not utilizing it, exercising it, how effective is it really going to be? Right. And how likely am I going to do it again? Right. That's you know, it, right there. Yeah, me mindfulness and meditation, it's, it's often referred to as the practice, right? And I think about that, like sports too, you got to practice every single day, or that muscle, that mindfulness muscle, that sports muscle, it just, it won't be strong. It won't be strong. That's, you hit the nail on the head. Think about the times, like I can think of myself when I have to get back in the gym and I haven't been there for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. That little walk on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you shouldn't go brutal. in all out, right? You, you need to ease your way back in, you know? And for me, that's what I have to do. You know, if I fall off a mindfulness practice, I can't just expect that I'm going to go sit down for an hour and a half and have a wonderful, relaxing, minute. you know, give myself five minutes. That uh -huh. just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just it, as you were saying that, I instantly thought about when you did this, I thought about mm. the grace mm. that we have to give ourselves. Mm -hmm. The grace is so important when we talk about this all the way through every aspect of it. Practicing grace, being OK with where we are and what we're experiencing yeah. and how we're managing and navigating through it. And um, I love that you shared that because. You, you talked about easing into it and knowing mm -hmm. that, okay, I didn't do this this other day, but I need to do it today. And I'm going to take my time and yeah. I'm going to exercise it accordingly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you said, just being, I want to be a perfectionist and I want to do it strong and I want to do it right. And it's like, those are old habitual stories that I'm just inviting myself to let go of each day. It's not I you. Love That's that. the practice for me. <laughs> takes a lot of practice it does <laughs> yeah but you know i think a lot of that has to do with the landscape that we i referenced earlier we can have our own intentions and goals but once we get in the whole scheme of what's going on in the world social media i mean the list goes on sure then yeah. we can get sucked right back and so again the intentionality the finding a way to be accountable plays a huge role and following that through and the grace and the grace. Yeah. And I love too, how you were mentioning just really savoring each moment with chewing or walking and, and you just brought up social media. And I think that's, 
the thing we have to put down, the phone, the LinkedIn, the Instagram, the TikTok, just for five minutes, just for the meal, you know, whatever it, it is. Oh, yeah. The emails. And it's emails. And then if you're layering in being a Black professional, being a minority, and then you have different dialogues that are going on, and then it gets things brewing sometimes that you try to put at bay. And so being conscious and being aware of exercising it, not just at the workplace, but all 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Because it how we show up for ourselves, um, I, I have an, a, a, a phrase that I've coined, intentional is how, how we live, how we show up for our life every mm. day. Mm -hmm. How are we showing up for ourselves? Not how people are showing up for us, because we know that, you know, that can wane, right? <laughs> for lack of better words, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. You have the best goals. They can have the, the best goals, but how we're showing up for our lives. Mm -hmm. Are we showing up in our best version? Are we really being accountable? Uh, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen those memes. What is your dialogue with yourself? Oh, yeah. Are the things that you're telling yourself, things that you, how would you feel if you were telling someone else that? Mm -hmm. That inner critic, yeah. That inner critic, right? Yeah. The self-sabotaging, -sab um, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. All of those things play a role in how we show up and how we practice holistic health. Mm -hmm. in the workplace I think it's extremely important so I'm glad we talked touched on that social media because as much as yeah. we don't want to necessarily think about it it is the elephant in the room oh sure yeah it's I heard a phrase once you know <laughs> a meme I think it was a meme too but it was like you know I think the elephant really ties the room together <laughs> <laughs> and I love elephants <laughs> and I love elephants but yes, yes, the <laughs> elephant does. It just makes it real evident yeah. what's going on, even though yeah. we don't, sometimes we want to be in denial, it's there. Yeah, yeah. So we're, so this is, you're, you're offering up practices that we can do for, folks can do for themselves. So I'm curious, in giving that back out, what ways can organizations actively support and promote holistic health initiatives within the workplace and particularly addressing the unique challenges faced by Black employees? That's a good question. That's a super question. And I think that organizations, as we know, play a pivotal role in supporting holistic health initiatives. And there are several ways that they can address holistic health uh, for Black professionals as well as minorities. Um, implementing mental health resources, making those available, accessible, right? Um, diverse wellness programs. And a, a diverse being the operative word, making sure that it addresses those nuances, the intersectionality, right? Of race, gender, all of those components. Um, fostering an inclusive environment, extremely important. And some of the things that, another thing that I would also interject is ensuring that the leadership that's carrying that out has a diverse representation as well. I think that's essential. That diverse mm -hmm. representation is going to, um, not there's no absolutes in anything, but it can help in or aid in making sure that these initiatives are carried out, this holistic health as it pertains to um, African-Americans, Black professionals. Um, some of the factors I would also say that um, organizations that should take into account, uh, there's a laundry list, but three top ones, <laughs> the three top <laughs> ones. Because <laughs> I'll be here all day and I don't want to do that. I know, I and I could do that with you, but uh, we have booked other speakers, but <laughs> you're going to have to come back. We're going to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> There goes the mindfulness. See, I'm being mindful, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Of other people's time. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have all, all the time the you want with me. I, I'm... Part of this amazing summit, right? All the speakers. 
Yeah, but enough yeah. about you, more about me now, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and laughter, and laughter is important, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it it's is, true. Though. It is, yeah. it is. Um, but three things that organizations should take into to account, intersectionality, race, gender, identities. This acknowledgement allows for more nuanced, tailored well-being strategies, okay? Holistic approach, as we talked about, um, it, it, it helps to consider the whole picture versus just individually, right? The impact that societal factors play. We talked about that, systemic challenges and what they play, really identifying that. You can work internally, but still address the elephant in the room, as we said, outside of that as well. We can't ignore mm -hmm. that. Um, and then lastly, not having generic approaches. They have to be tailored tailored strategies that are specific to the needs of Black employees and minority employees. Um, and so with that said, those three things, I would say, amongst many others, should be factored in as organizations approach wellness as it pertains to Black professionals and minorities. Yeah, because nobody wants to feel like they're getting a cookie cutter prescription or it just doesn't feel authentic, right? When it's just lip service or from a booklet, you're like, this, how does this apply to me? No, it's not meeting people where they are mm, either. Mm -hmm. It's not taking into account individually where they are. You know, I worked with students for many years, but I never assumed that every student that came in to meet with me had the same situation. I had to take in consideration. They had different classes, different lifestyles, different life situations. And in order to provide them with that, that service, the optimal service, I had to take that into account. Mm -hmm. Even the things that we don't know that are going on, we have to take that into account, be open to listening and understanding that as well. So that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're almost out of time. I would love to hear if it's possible in a minute. I don't know if this yes. might be a tall okay. order, okay. but I would love okay. to hear a bit about some of this, uh, a success story perhaps of uh, a Black prof professional that has leveraged holistic practices that drives their career success and, and what lessons others could learn from that experience potentially. So one that comes to mind very quickly is uh, Ursula Burns, the former CEO of Xerox. Um, Ursula Burns was a trailblazer in the business world. Uh, she became the first African-American woman to lead a Fortune 500 company. And some of the practices that she utilized that she is known for, she spoke, um, speaks about on platforms, is her resilience and adaptability in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Recovering from challenges, obstacles, finding her footing back, as well as adapting and pivoting, being being willing to pivot as need be. So that's mm -hmm. one of many. I have a host of them that I could share, but that was one that comes to mind because that really mm -hmm. stuck with me, that resilience factor. Growth mm -hmm. mindset is important. Emotional intelli intelligence. Um, we could go on and on and on, but several moguls have utilized these practices and they're very mindful and most successful people that you'll meet especially black professionals have incorporated something whether it's faith-based whether it's um, just mindfulness spirituality um, breath work whatever it is find that utilize it and exercise it be intentional and and accountable to yourself awesome Kim Anthony, thank you so much for making the time today. Please come back. I would love to do this again. And how can folks uh, keep the conversation with you going? And how can I stalk you on social media media so I can keep the conversation going with you? Yes, please. Uh, Care Collective Firm is my Instagram, as well as Single Mom Society. Please stay connected with me. I'll share the links. Uh, we have an article that just posted today. Um, please stay connected. Single Mom Society uh, Club and Care Collective Firm. Thank you so much for your time. You've been a, a gracious host. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you so much for being here.
Bye now. Have a good rest of your Bye-bye. day. Bye-bye. You as well. <laughs> Thank you.